two, one. Good morning. Welcome to the Carla Marie and Anthony Show. My name is morning. Anthony. I'm Carla Marie. And uh, I know a lot of people are off today, so I don't know if the chat is going to be as uh, vibrant yes. as it normally is. I don't even know how many people are in there right now. Thank you very much, Maria and Bmore, for the 1,000 bits. Why? 1,000 bits will push us uh, a little closer to hype train level five. I feel like Maria hasn't been here live lately. Maybe she's just making up for it. No, she was here. I want to say, Maria, I, I remember seeing you in here last week. We're in hype train level four right now, so everyone who's watching on YouTube, um, you can actually see this happen if you ever watch us live. But basically, the hype train, if you're new, because today's a day off, so a lot of people's schedules yeah. are weird. The hype train is if you subscribe, follow um, gift us with bits like Maria just did or oh. gift subscriptions like D Lim and Y just did with, I think, 10 David Lim. gifted subscriptions. No, maybe more than that. 20 gifted subscriptions. Jeez. Uh, you guys, no, we got to get rid of that list on the side because I feel like it's going to turn into a competition. That's fine. Competing is, so, look at that. We are at 323% of Hype Train Level 5. Now that bell is going to keep going because we're in money making mode right now. <laughs> Um, and basically, anytime someone does can something, um, I don't know if I can. Maybe I can. Your voice just squeaked pretty I, hard. Yeah, right that was something. <laughs> You're like a little squealing like a pig. Thank you. It was weird. That was so nice of you. <laughs> you did, though. Uh, let me see where I can do. Here we go. Subscriptions. Just uh, There's got to be a fault. There, there it is. is. I think that's one. Uh... Did it go, turn down a little bit, right? No, but I don't Is even it a little see, lower? Oh, it's happening on the screen that I can't see right now. David Lim, thank you very much. What? Maria, thank you very much. Everyone subscribing before I got here. I was in the other room. Thank you. I think now we're... So the reason you kept hearing... No, it's still there. It's definitely a little quieter. Yeah, but now I put it at zero. Heather said, I'm off for the holiday, so I'm here to... I'm able to be live today. That's cool. Heather, where are you lists watching from? But are these all money based or is there a point system? Uh, you can't gift subs with points. I don't believe so. Okay. I think they're all at zero now. Nope. I don't know how to. I, I'm There's fine so with much quiet. I'm fine with it quieter, but like when it, it like. <laughs> oh, here. This is. Oh, I was testing things like an idiot instead of actually lowering the volume. <laughs> what a dummy. Okay, so we are drinking Tito's, um, so I guess we are definitely drinking Tito's. Later on this week, we are going to have, um, we're going to try a different rum, so I'm excited for that. We'll tell you all about it on Thursday morning. Are we good? Okay. I think Much so. calmer in here now. Got the peaceful creek behind us. Heather is listening from Central Jersey, which is a mystical land. It does not exist. It's like Narnia. Thanks, Jen. The sweater is from Urban Outfitters, and it's like a lot of years old, and it's got all the things ripped in it. So I I seriously need to redo my wardrobe, and I am past the point of my life where I enjoy buying clothes. Um, I don't really even know where to buy clothes anymore, and nothing fits. I hate trying things on in dressing rooms because there's nothing more annoying than taking your clothes off in a fitting room and having to put them back on. I agree. That's one of the reasons I don't really have a lot of clothes is nothing. I feel like I, I don't fit into things properly, especially yeah. jeans. And I think everyone has that issue. Hate jeans. Um, Hate and I don't feel like going to all the stores and trying on a bunch of different jeans. So like right now I've got three pairs of jeans. I have a blue pair, a gray pair and a black pair. And that's I it. Two. I need a black pair. I have blue, gray. And, and they're all kind of tight right now. Not going to lie. Same. Let's uh, let's do the shot. Let's celebrate the fact that we are at 343% of the hype train. I had a dream that you kept putting these in the dishwasher and the words kept coming off. I mean, I put them in the dishwasher once by and accident. And they were fine, yeah. which is crazy, but. Well, let's do the shot. Lisa said, once I know one thing fits, I buy multiples. Same. Yes. That's what I did with my uh, Target t-shirts. I, f I tried a bunch of. Different cheap t-shirts on, and the Target ones seem to fit me the best. Uniqlo was also okay, a little yeah. tighter. Um, and once I found the size, which was just a large, it's not like I would, it's some crazy size that I had to wear in a t-shirt. But once I realized the large t-shirt actually fit me the way I wanted it to from Target, I bought, I think I have 
eight of them. And that's just because they didn't have any more colors. Eight. I would have kept going. I keep trying to get um, uh, the black jeans that I need from Abercrombie, but they don't, like, I tr- was there. I even tried on jeans the other day in store. It was miserable. Well, then once you wash things, they also change. That happens. And I and I know people are going to be like, oh, well, you can h- hang dry things or dry them it's tumble low. My jeans are stiff when you do that. I, if I can't do my laundry by putting everything in the washer and then everything in the dryer, I'm, those clothes are just not designed for me. Yeah. That's it. No. I know. I started leaving his clothes out of the dryer sometimes. You did? Yeah. Oh, I didn't even realize that. Uh, I saw B. Young say, morning, guys. It's been a while, so. Hello. Welcome back. Is B. E. Young Brian? I, don't, I didn't see the, the name. I just be young. I'm, I know you haven't been here live in a while. I'm trying to remember. Uh, Karina from New York. I've started to listen to. Oh, sorry. Here. Started to listen to My Day Friday from the beginning episodes on Apple Podcasts. I laugh when I hear those episodes and think of how much you've both matured and how much you've done since those days. One of the episodes was Lent and Anthony challenged CM to not buy anything. Funny you say you're past enjoying buying clothes now. You still buy a lot of things. I feel like there's always, there's always, oh yeah, but there's always like packages coming in from Amazon and stuff. And I know some of it's for the show because we do order supplies and whatnot. And if you go look at all the orders, I'd say 90% of it is the cats. The other 10% lately has been organizational things. Mm -hmm. Like I got another shower shelf for the bathroom. I got a charging dock. I like, I don't want to spend money. It's not enjoyable to me. It's just things that I'm trying to like better my life and my organization. But I don't like buy clothes anymore. And yes, I rent them with Newly, and I actually have to go fill out my Newly bag today because my Newly unlocks on the twentieth. I had to pause for a while. So, have they made a, a guy version of this yet? No, but um, they did email me about a um, like a referral affiliate program, and I am going to be all over that. Uh, thank you very much to B. Young and Court and Spokane for the subscriptions with Prime. And if you're not aware, uh, both on a streak or have done it for over a year, but if you're not aware, if you do have a Prime account, you can subscribe to our channel basically for free. You get one, <laughs> bless you, you bless get one truth. included account um, to follow every single month. Yeah. And if you go to our YouTube channel, the video to do that is there. I know things have changed. We've got to update it, but it's close. Um, so we have to create a new video, hopefully by next week for that. Carla Marie, what did you do in those shots? It's Tito's uh, lemon and ice. I would like to point out, hold on. Look at the way that you distributed that shot. I have a little less because my <laughs> mouth is smaller. It's, Carla Marie's taking a half shot there. It is not a half shot. But it's a national holiday, so we'll let it pass. Cheers to you. Cheers, Cheers Carla Marie. Okay. See how long it takes today. Oh, not too bad. I needed less. That's why. So, have you eaten breakfast? I think if you eat before we do the show, you'd have a much easier time taking the shot. It has nothing to do with that. No, I had like a full breakfast and I just took it down fine. Oh, thank you, Be Young. Look Wait, did you tell us if your name is Brian or what? Five hundred oh. bits. Thank you very much. So. Last week, Karina in New York said that we should try the billionaire morning routine, which is a list of 10 things that billionaires claim they do every morning. And it's not like this is how you become a billionaire. It's just living the life yeah. that a billionaire lives. That you didn't earn yet. Oh, B. Young is Bill from Syracuse. Got it. Got you, Bill. Sorry for calling you, Brian. Okay, so I started the billionaire morning routine today. And let go? me tell you how difficult it is to add 10 things. <laughs> so what So what did you have to do? I know we went over the list um, last week, but mm-hmm. what did you have to do this morning? Uh, first thing you do is recall your dreams. So I'm documenting this via video as I do it. I don't know if I'm going to turn it into a video because it may be boring as hell. Probably. So, But I'm going to do it throughout the week just so I can say I did it and okay. see what it feels like. So you recall your dreams, which, okay, boom, done. Then you drink water is the next step. But I was like, all right, I'm not going to sit here and drink water on camera. I'll make sure that by the time I start the show, I drink a significant amount of water. Maybe you start each little day with finishing the last sip. Ah, Finished my water, my billionaire water. Okay, so step one is recall your dreams. Step two is make your bed. 
Okay. Which I will say has been my favorite thing in this because it's done. My room looks so nice, except for the clothes that are everywhere, but it looks so nice. Mm -hmm. If I was a billionaire, someone would be in my room right now picking up someone my Someone would be making your bed if you were a billionaire. That's why this makes no sense. Then um, drink water, then breathe. And I use my Apple Watch to do the one minute of breathing. So it like okay. it vibrates and you breathe. And I was like, okay, that was like a nice little calming way to start the day. Then make a move. So they say like do anything like jump up and down, small movements, blah, blah, whatever. I did a Apple Fitness workout For how in long? my room. It was a 20-minute ab workout. Okay. Ideally, I go to Barry's boot camp at that moment, but they didn't have a 515 today. Um, then take a cold shower. So I took a shower, and then the last 10 seconds, I turned it to cold, and it was wild. My goal is to do more throughout the week. How long did you leave it on cold, sir? 10 seconds. 10 seconds. Could you do it? I've done it before. How many seconds? 30 to 60. All right, that's my goal by the end of the week. Yeah. You just, and I don't think you have to build up to it. You just, you can start with 30 seconds. But what part do I put under? Your whole body, your head, your whole body. Well, I don't wash my hair every day. Oh, then I would go to like your, if you don't wash your hair every day, then I would put your back towards the, back. towards the water Ooh. and then have it hit like your upper back. Okay. So it hits the most of you. You'd have to hold your hair though, probably. So it doesn't get wet. Thank you. No problem. I do still wash my back when I don't wash my hair. You know that, right? It doesn't look like it. <laughs> Also, uh, Lisa brought up Betty White. We're going to talk about her yes. in a second. Um, and then it says the journal. So I use my two-minute journal, like the thing that it kind of like leaves blank spaces and asks you questions. Mm -hmm. So I did that. Make a, oh, shoot. What did you forget to Make do? Make a to-do list. I did. And then I read. It said to read. So I read a little bit of my cat book. I missed my make-to-feel list. I feel like you're supposed to read something a little more, I don't know, productive than a cat book. No, it doesn't say. Uh, what was the thing you missed? Make a to-feel list, how I want to feel today. Isn't every day just good? I would like to feel good. Well, I would maybe like to I want to feel justified. Maybe I want to feel strong. All right, that's fair. I don't want to feel rich. I want to be rich. Oh, wear a shower cap. That's from uh, Scotty and And then and I can put my whole head under yeah. there. And from Julie. That requires me to buy something. That's true. Okay. So how do you feel? Oh. Even though you didn't write it down on your to-feel list. Well, how do I want to feel or how do I feel? How do you feel after doing your first billionaire good. morning? It was nice to have a routine because there are mornings where I don't have a routine. I wake up and I'm frazzled. Mm -hmm. So it kind of, as much as I was very rushed doing all of it, it was nice to have a routine. I think it could be something I could get into. Yeah, I think you're going to have to start your routine a little earlier. Well, I did. Uh, Carla Marie walked in here about 30 seconds before <laughs> the countdown was over. I was ready to wake up, finally. I'm like, all right, I snooze a bunch, which I don't think billionaires do. And then John came and laid on my arm, and Erica came and laid right here. And I was like, fuck. <laughs> I can't get up now. Uh, so. Let's see what we got here in the chat. Oh, real quick before we move on. So not only is today MLK Day. Yes. Um, but I it's also like the, it would have been the 100th birthday for Betty White. Yes. She would have turned 100 years old today. So the, the movement on social media right now and online in general is since she was such a huge advocate for animal rescues mm -hmm. to donate a little bit of money or as much as you can really yes, uh, to an animal rescue of your choice. Obviously ours here in the state of Washington and Western Washington specifically is Motley Zoo Animal Rescue. Um, you can Venmo them. Motley Zoo dash Animal Rescue. Can you share a link to a Venmo? Can you put that in the chat? I, Does that work? I don't think so. I tried doing that the other day and it doesn't work. Um, you can type it though. Motley Zoo dash Animal Rescue. Um, the goal is to Venmo $5 to them. To Animal Rescues. Any Animal Rescue. Yeah, that's it. Um, because, yeah. yeah. Betty White was a big advocate for... Um, animals, adopting. Like, literally, she has goals to me. I would love to live to, well, I want to live, would like to make it to 100 and then die. I don't know if I'd like to make it to 100, but if I was that close, obviously, I want to make it Correct. to 100. I'm at a point now where I'm like, eh, man, my body, like, when was the last time we saw her in public? Not us, but, like, people. I don't know. She was on that show Hot in Cleveland for a while. That was a long time ago. That was. It just feels like at some point, like, your body's like, I can't do it anymore. Yeah. And it hurts. And I feel like <laughs> there was also uh, another 
older person who passed away who did make it past their 100th birthday. Uh, one, of the, one of the last remaining Tuskegee Airmen passed away this, uh, I don't know this weekend. So the Tuskegee Airmen were uh, critical in World War II, and it was an entirely African-American division of our Air Force. And uh, cool. I believe in World War II they never lost um, a pilot to enemy fire throughout the entire war. Um, and they were they were very integral in that, and all the way up to the Vietnam War as well. But speaking of getting to your hundred and whatever birthday, I think yeah. once you once you get to ninety nine, you're like, just Lord, give me a couple more days. Let me just hit that triple digit, and then you can take me out. I feel like though, as crazy as it is, like we had Betty White for almost a hundred years, yeah. and like we didn't get enough of her. You know what I mean? Like I feel like. I th- no, I think out of all the people in the world, we got enough of no, Betty no, White. No, we didn't get enough of her. We just, we all talked about her. Like, I wanted more of her. I, I'm excited to see the special today yes. that is airing. Because um, I'm, I'm assuming there are recent interviews with her on there. Yeah, because she had just done an interview for People Magazine, I think, right before she yes. passed. Um, that's what I was looking for. So, not only, it kind of ties into MLK Day a bit, but she obviously was very... In the world of adopt your pets, take care of your pets, take care of animals. She was always seen, like, with animals. Okay. And anytime she was on a game show, any of her winnings went to the ASPCA. Okay. But she was also, so she had a talk show, mm-hmm. which is crazy to think that a woman had a talk show that long ago. Yeah. I when did she, it air? Do you know? So the 50s or 60s? 90, okay, so in the 50s, okay. early 50s. So she had, I believe it was a black dancer on her show. And I don't know who it was, but they were like, he has to go. And she was like, then you're canceling my show. Mm-hmm. I'm not, and it, his name was Arthur Duncan. And she was like, you're not getting rid of this man. He is a great dancer. And I feel like this has happened to her more than once, where she was like, absolutely not. Yeah. Like, he is talented. So what? Like, keep him on my show. And she was willing to lose everything. To stand up for someone else. And I think we can all learn a little bit from that. Absolutely. A lot of it from that, honestly. Um, I think if you're going to take a moral stand, you have to take it all the time. Yeah. You can't just take it when it's convenient, you know? So she, oh, well, this is great. After that, she said, um, she was in an interview when she was 83 years old. And she said that she used him in every opportunity she could after that. And yeah, then you're just like, sticking it to the yeah, man, which I love. I love it. I Anytime love it. Anytime you can stick it to corporate. Does she have a book? I don't need to read it. That's a great question. I'm sure the chat knows. <laughs> the chat is our Google. Yeah. So if you have what? a couple extra bucks and you'd like to uh, donate to a phenomenal cause, find an animal rescue near you. If you're in Western Washington and you'd like to support our favorite animal rescue, the Motley it's Zoo. Motley Zoo Animal Rescue. Motley Zoo dash animal rescue. Like put the hyphen between yeah. the middle of the word. Um, um, and that will get you their Venmo. So I took a screenshot of my friend Amma, um, her Instagram story last night. Amma and I went to University of Rhode Island together. I spent one year there, and I actually got to see Go her Rams. like a month or what did you, I think you said M's. I Go was Rams, like, right? Absolutely, yeah, Rhodey Rams. Um, <laughs> L for love. What is that? <laughs> you know the L for love? All for love? L for love. It's from uh, Dodgeball. Oh. Rhodey Rams. Okay. Anyway. Anyway, so Alma and I worked for the um, Student Entertainment Committee together, and she actually came out here a few months ago, and we got coffee together. I hadn't seen her in forever, so it was awesome. Um, but she is a comedian. She's, like, touring now. Cool. Alma, A-M-M-A, Marfo. Follow her on Instagram. She's hilarious. But she shared this yesterday, and I thought it was important for us, so bear with me. I'm going to read it. It's not too long. She said, heading this off early, posting MLK quotes tomorrow without attention to or action on how voting rights are under assault in this country is an empty gesture, and I won't be entertaining those this year. Post the quotes by all means, but also read up on the blocks being put in place and take note of who they're silencing. Contact your legislators and ask them to support stalled legislation. Use tools like Stance, so that's, I guess, is an app or something, I don't Stance with a capital S. Or five calls. That's another app. Those are both apps. Oh, apps, yeah. There we go. Stance or five calls. Give to organizations like Fair Fight Action trying to secure voting rights around the country. 
MLK was a man of action. Want to honor his legacy? Don't just post the words, live them. That's fair. And I was like, that is, yes, I love that. Um, and I think it's important if we're going to tell you to donate to an animal rescue in honor of Betty White. Also, a great organization that she called out is Fair Fight Action. So, keep that in mind today when you are posting your MLK quotes. It is kind of crazy. Moving to Washington in terms of, like, voter rights, it is so easy to vote here. Yeah. Like, like, you have to actively try to not participate in the vote. Um, I think we, like, it's tough being here and hearing, like, oh, it's, it's difficult to vote. I'm like, what do you mean? And then I even think, like, back to when I first started voting in New Jersey. Yeah. Yes, it is difficult to vote because you don't have off and you have to get to a voting center by a certain time. And then yeah. there's a line and then it's raining and then you got to feed your kids. And that's in a very white area of New Jersey, right? Like, and the fact that we don't get off to vote yeah. for very important elections is bizarre. Well, the interesting thing, I know um, when you when you compare and contrast like a state like Washington or Oregon to what Georgia's going through now, where Georgia, I believe, made it, illegal to um hand out food or drink to anyone who's standing in line like, to what, vote why it's like, well listen if you're not gonna let me vote from home or mail in a vote at least let me get a free bottle of water yeah. if i'm standing out here all day or then open more voting centers yeah. uh, some offices give people an hour to vote but that's not even it's really not enough it, listen if you're like i'm from ridgewood new jersey if you lived close to ridgewood or if you worked close to Ridgewood, yeah, it was probably easy to drive there, vote, because it's not a huge town, yeah. right? There's not a ton of people voting there. But if you're in a city and everyone's hopefully going to vote those days, then you need a little bit more time. Yeah. No. You either, I think there are okay, two options. What One if is, I stand outside of the voting line and hand out food? What do you mean? Like before people get in line, I hand them a snack. Maybe if they're not in queue already. Like, they're not directly like, behind hey, someone. Hey, look what I got. Come get yeah. a snack and then run back in line, save his spot. Or just set up, like, a food stand. Which is. And say that you're, like, Uber Eats and just, I don't know, just start delivering things. Which, it's ridiculous that this yeah. is a conversation. But. I we, think that uh, you either have to let people vote from home, like a mail-in vote, or you've got to give make it a national holiday. And give. Agreed. Give people a day off. And everyone's like, oh, mail-in voting is fake. It's like. And I, we talked about this in the, on the show before. I'm a positive that we have. Mm-hmm. When we first moved here to Washington, it was the 2016 election. We were like, all right, we got to go vote. It's our first time voting in Washington. We had registered to vote here almost immediately. And we are looking all over the state. Like, we were such idiots. Yeah. Look, we're like, where do we go to vote in person? And people are like, what do you, like, what do you mean? And yeah. we're like, oh, to hit the button. And well, it's like, been a dozen years since people voted, had to vote in person. Here. Here. Yeah. We didn't know that we had, like, so we filled out the Scantron, basically, and we took it with us just in case, but then we, on election day, dropped it in a bin, because that's, we found out that day that that's the only way to do that. Yeah. You can vote almost, like, a month in advance, like. But if you go to the post office, they still give you a sticker in uh, Washington. Oh, I didn't know. We went to one place that still had stickers left, and it was, like, a big deal. Well, now I drop it in, like. I don't even mail it. I drop it in the the ballot box that gets picked up every day. Yep. Even then, I'll wait till like last minute, but you shouldn't. But having the ability to sit home and have my paper written and then be able to watch candidate videos and look them up and, and be like, let me wait for a few days. Oh, they're going to do a live interview. And I know that places will mail in advance, like the what it's going to look like when you get in there. But the fact that we trust a machine, right? Like when you think about it, okay. Either way, we're trusting a machine, right? Like, it's going to scan the paper or what. But Hopefully. you go in, right? At least I know when I write on my paper, I am physically writing on that paper, right? When you go into these voting machines and you, yeah, where is that going? Where is that going? It's plugged into my shitty elementary school gym. It's like when you give a, a little kid the spare controller for your PlayStation <laughs> or your Xbox. Like, hey, you're playing. Just I'm like, keep if, pressing some buttons. If you're going to shit on mail-in voting, shit yeah. on the fake button that you could be hitting. Uh, Vicky Vitz, 1215, said, we waited almost two hours to vote for governor of New Jersey a few months ago. You definitely need more time. Yeah. And I know someone earlier in the chat said that your employer is supposed to give you time off to vote, like a couple hours, I guess, or an hour at most, or at the least. Um and some people have to wait in line with yeah. kids. Like, and, But it's interesting because I think since 
my entire adult life, I've never had like a full nine to five job. Right. So if I ever needed to vote, I could always Go make like it work. Go like 2 p.m. Yeah, yeah. Like early in my career, I was I was hourly. So I would usually get back home early enough in New Jersey to vote. And then obviously once you do mornings, you've got yeah. an ample amount of time in the afternoon to vote. But I remember as a kid, like going with my mom to vote. Mm-hmm. And I feel like I went into the little booth with her. But then also I feel like sometimes those ladies were like, she has to stay outside. But I love what your, what was your friend's name? Amma, A-M-M-A. So the quote that she had on her Instagram story um, was to remember that MLK was a man of action. And yes. And I think when you do care about things, when you care about any cause, uh, specifically today, obviously, and hopefully every day, uh, civil rights, but when you care about any cause, just posting something on Instagram is not action. It's the easiest thing you can do. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's free and it's easy. And yes, sometimes like- posting on Instagram can create awareness of issues but if you care about something be about that every day of your life you know care about it every day not when it's convenient or when it's trending or when there's a national holiday to celebrate a person who was influential in that that space care about your causes every day and fight Mm -hmm. for them every day because no one else is going to fight for them if you don't and live them don't like anthony just said and like Amma said don't just post a quote and move on like, you literally hit two buttons. Uh, Shanna FC said, I live in Oregon, and we've always had mail-in voting since I was able to vote. Yeah, so I, it's been, was Oregon the first state? Well, and so someone like Shanna and Amanda also saying, uh, who lives in Oregon, saying, I love being able to vote by mail. What is it like for you guys seeing the rest of the country be like, vote by mail is terrible, blah, blah, blah. Like, this is just all you've ever known. Well, the problem in the last election, one of the problems, uh, there were many, but one of the problems in the last election was a lot of states used vote by mail that weren't ready for what you have to do to count and tally yeah. and, and, and collect everything. Whereas Washington and Oregon have been doing it, California, I believe, does it as well, um, have been doing it for a very long time. Mm-hmm. But, like, in Pennsylvania, they weren't allowed to count any of the mail-in votes until all of the in-person votes were counted. Why? Which made it look like they were counting votes late, but that leg- legislatively legislatively, they weren't allowed to do that. Pennsylvania does stuff ass backwards sometimes. They do. Even when they sell alcohol. Can't you, like, not buy alcohol? Beer and, and alcohol are sold in different places. Yeah. Listen, do you have to go to, like, I'm a beer to warehouse? Drunk. If I'm trying to get drunk, I need to go to the same place. Stop making me travel around. I spent a lot of time in the sticks drunk. of Pennsylvania, and it's, well, I don't know what I'd call the sticks, but. Uh, let's see. We don't really use mail by vote where I'm from, but I would totally be down if we want to. Yeah, yeah. And here's the interesting thing. I I do think that voting in person is kind of fun. If you live in a place where you're not waiting online for four and a half hours to do yeah. it, if there are voting stations, if they're enough by you, I think it's awesome. Wait, so in Virginia, you also can't buy alcohol and beer together or liquor and beer together? And then um, someone said in New York, it's where to go. Meg said in New York, it's like that as well. But New York's not in New York City. You can buy beer and alcohol. And beer together. I don't know, actually. I feel like I've never been to a liquor store in New York City. I've only gone to, like, bodegas and bought, like, a 40 or something. A 4 loco, for sure, you bought. That was more of my New Jersey time. I don't think I was going into... Actually, no, I definitely was going into the city drinking 4 locos. Um, what was I going to say a second ago? I forgot. Uh, Lisa brought something up, which is so funny. It's so weird to me here. She said, after living in New Jersey my whole life, it's crazy when you can go to a CVS... Mm-hmm. Or a grocery. Also, she said food store. My friends here make fun of me for calling grocery stores food it's store. Not a, it's a grocery store <laughs> or a supermarket. And you can buy beer. Like when we were in Costco, I'm like, it's wild that the alcohol is right here. When in New Jersey, there is a separate yeah. <laughs> little and Costco it's, next the door The one you walk to in New Jersey, if you're familiar with, I believe it's in Hackensack. Clifton. Clifton? That's um, the one I. It, like you look like you're walking into a prison. To get the, to get the uh, alcohol. It's like what? all because it, it has like oh. metal gates all yeah. around it. The, the thing that I forgot a second ago but just remembered was, here's what we need to do when it comes to the purchasing of vices, right? So alcohol, beer, I guess wine is also alcohol, but spirits, yeah. wine, beer, mm-hmm. and weed all need to be purchasable the same way. Yeah. They'll do essentially similar things. Like, I want weed to be legal the same way beer is legal. Diane in Vermont, beer and wine are sold together here, but liquor must be separate. I feel like anytime I've been in Vermont, I've only am buying wine or beer. Like I was never like throwing a rager where I needed vodka. Mm-hmm. 
so I guess I never noticed that, but. In Arkansas, you can buy wine and beer in the grocery store, but not hard liquor. See, I know there are a lot of places like, like that. Why? But even when, you, even when we travel cross country, oftentimes there are uh, gas stations or convenience stores that can sell yeah. beer, but they're, they're not selling hard alcohol. We need Seattle Cocktail Club in here. Are they sleeping? They might be. To go cocktails. I'm pumped. We were talking about that. The yeah, New York us. State, I believe. Um, Kathy, what's her name? The gov- the new governor. I don't live in New York anymore, so don't. Yeah. Or I never lived in New York, but I don't live near yeah. New York anymore. So, um, But she said she was going to extend that possibly forever. She's genius. And I know. Cultural. Washington extended it, but I don't think they're going to extend it forever. Well, Washington, we're lucky we're allowed to drink here. What do you mean? Don't we have weird liquor? Li- oh, there are. Well, in when you're at like a bar or club or a lounge in Washington, there are unique laws similar to Salt Lake City, yeah. similar to Utah, um, because early on Mormons. there were a lot of Mormons who settled in the state of Washington yeah. just like they did in the state of Utah. So it's one of the states where like if you go out to a club and you buy a bottle, like, you get bottle service, they lock it. Lock. They do it in Arizona, too, actually. So weird. And my, so, I think we talked about this, how we went to my sister's bachelorette party in Scottsdale, and we went out, we got a bottle, and it was locked, and the girls were like, what is happening? Yeah. Why is there alcohol? I'm like, guys, like, this is, you're not in Jersey anymore, sisters. Like, they have to pour it for you, and it's probably better off for all of us, and honestly, it was, because no one was over pouring. A bottle lasted us way longer. Listen, that's if I'm him. buying a bottle, I'm overpouring. Like, that's the reason I bought that bottle. I didn't buy that bottle to make, you know, responsible adult decisions. Which I want to I want to go get, like, bottle service. I haven't done it since the summer, since I was at the uh, my friend's bachelor parties in Austin and Nashville. Bottle service, I will say, is unbelievably overrated. What? <laughs> yeah, that's the dumbest thing I've, I've heard in this, this space. I don't want to make my own drinks. No, but you don't all you still usually have a cocktail waitress of some sort that's still helping you, like a bottle service waitress uh, who's pouring for you, but you will have the option to pour for yourself as well. Shout out to Morgan from Cedro Woolley. Thank you very much. Hello. Bless you. God, what is happening? Thank you. Listen, I, I think the markup for bottle service, yes. It's a usually a twenty to oh. seventy dollar bottle that you're paying like hundreds of dollars for. But you're going to overpay for most drinks in a club anyway. So that part I think we have to disregard for a second. But especially as a guy, bottle service makes a whole lot of sense. Like when we were at my friend's bachelor parties in Nashville and Austin, the only way you're going to get a group of a bunch of dudes into a club or a lounge or a bar, and we, were, we weren't we were going to like the fans. It's not like we were going to like Lavo in New York City or in Vegas. We were going to like... You just dropped some it's a name. place that people might know. Um, we were going to like some of the the bars on uh, what's that Nash Vegas Street? Is it Broadway in Vegas? Right, yeah. You said Austin. Now you said Nashville. Said now you both. just said Vegas. No, no, Nash Vegas. I said. And then you said in Vegas. I promise okay. you said in Vegas. So Broadway. Where so are we you? We were going to like. <laughs> You know, Jason Aldean's bar, Miranda Lambert's bar. It's not like these were fancy places, but right. we were still getting bottle service okay. because it's unbelievably crowded. And even if we were able to get in without waiting in a really long line, I don't want to stand there shoulder to shoulder. And okay. Just be like, no, I do so agree. Fun. I will agree with this. And Radio Fam said this, that it's nice when you have a home base. Yeah. Like you buy a bottle and you're allowed to be in this spot. And you can dance on couches. That's my favorite thing in the world. No, they always yell at you. No, they don't. Um, the Betty White documentary thing, by the way, mm-hmm. is on January 31st, not today. Oh, interesting. So I apologize for saying that. Uh, then someone who was at Heather in Long Island or Heather on Long Island, I believe it was. Yes. Said, sorry about your Raiders loss. Always drama with those referees. Now, the Raiders played like garbage for most of the game. Uh, they still had a chance to win it at the very end. And that officiating crew that. Are they fired? They're not fired, but they are not going to officiate another game this season. Um, the NFL they got something- suspended? Not really. And it's, it's a weird story. So, generally speaking, the referees from the divisional or championship rounds okay. of the playoffs are the ones who do the Super Bowl. Mm. So, there was a 
there was only a small chance to begin with that any of the referees from this game, the wild card game with the Bengals and the Raiders, would have made it to the Super Bowl. Okay. So the story is being a little blown out of proportion. But I'll be honest with you, I would never in my life want to be a referee. I don't care how much money they make. They're definitely their lives are definitely threatened. Their kids' lives are threatened. Like I mean, you get cur- you're getting cursed at at some point every day of your. They say their life. names on TV, so yeah. people find them. I don't. Th- well, this isn't like listen. If this is Central America, if a ref costs you a lot of money in a bet. Mm-hmm. You're gonna kill them. No, I think. But in Not Central actually. and South America, there have been referees and stuff, and and soccer players. Usually, they're usually in the game of soccer who have been murdered. In America, that's not really going to happen as often. Because people ever. in America are lazy and don't. Uh, the Cowboys game is also a mess. There were really only two good endings. So who's left? Who's left? Well, you still have one game tonight with the Rams and oh, the, that's the hot coach. No, hold on. The Rams and the Cardinals are playing tonight. Otherwise, you've got the Bengals playing in Nashville. Speaking of Nashville, they're playing in Nashville. Next week, the who's the Nashville Tennessee Titans? There you go. Well done. That's all my brains for my brain cells for today. <laughs> Wait, so the who did I say had the hot coach? The Rams. The, is he hot or was I wrong? I think we are seeing younger and younger coaches. So comparatively to who we used to see, are we seeing younger coaches or am I now the age of the? No, coaches? no, we're seeing younger coaches in general. We're seeing head coaches who are under forty. What a time to be alive. Like the Eagles, I believe their coach might be under yeah, 40. Yeah, yeah, Sean McVay. He's a hottie. I'll root for them. And I think you look like, you like uh, Cliff Kingsbury. Look at that guy. Actually, look up Cliff Kingsbury. No, not his house. <laughs> his actual face. His house is nice. That guy? Yeah. He's all right. So, really. him, so those two coaches are going against each other today. Oh, he's dating a reporter? Good for him. Sean McVay is only 35. He's still, no, he's still 35? What do you mean he's still? I feel like he got hired at 35. 35. He's. The we, Bengals also have a, a pretty good oh, coach. Sean as well. McVay will be 36 in a few days. There you go. January 24th, 1985. He's a few months older than me. You could be a head coach. You'd be a good coach. I could see you with like. I'd be an awful. I could see you with these things and the little mic. Put the mic thing on, and put a little clipboard. No, I I, I can wear headphones and, uh, and use a microphone. Yes, I don't think I would be a good head coach, especially for a pro football team. <laughs> I'd be terrible. <laughs> what the best comment ever just came in. It's Meg, not Megan. Sports with the Z with CM. The Z stands for Zaddy. Zaddy. <laughs> The 49ers QB is yummy, says Martha. Who's Jimmy that? Garoppolo is a good-looking dude. Yeah, 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 yeah. Scotty said there's a video of him and the assistant coach where the assistant keeps him out of the way of the refs. It's hot. Which which coach which, are we talking which, about yeah, now? Yeah, do I need the, to The Bengals up? coach actually did something really cool um, after the Raiders-Bengals game. I was reading about it last night, and... The city of Cincinnati has not seen a football playoff win. Yeah, they said it 800 30 times. Years. 31, actually. Pretty big deal. I, mean, I think the Detroit Lions have had a playoff win more recently than the Cincinnati Bengals. Okay. And that's saying a lot because the Detroit Lions are, without a doubt, the worst franchise in all of football. Possibly in all of sports. The Jets are up there, too. But what the coach did was he took, like, one of the commemorative game balls that they give out to, like, people who are important to winning that mm-hmm. game. And on his way home, he stopped at a bar, walked into the bar, and gifted it essentially like to the fans, but gave it to the bar and so they could display it. It has it's one of those uh, footballs that That's has cool. like the white panel on it with the um, team logo. You know what I'm talking about, like yeah, where you yeah. get them signed and whatnot. But he stopped him and the punter stopped at a, a local bar as people were still celebrating That's the win, cool. and gave him the, the gave him the ball and had a, like a quick two minute speech and walked out. Uh, also, Kyle Shanahan, yeah, Forty Nine er, are they still playing? Yeah, they'll be playing next oh. week. They beat the Cowboys. He's hot, too. So the Cowboys 49ers game Lots and the, of hot coaches. the Bengals Raiders game are really the only two decent games that we had this weekend. That guy's a Dilf. Is he a dad? Kyle Shanahan? I have no idea. Children. Yep. Perfect. There you go. Uh, Who are we talking about now in the chat? 
Yeah, but it really was not a good sports weekend for me. I spent a lot no. of time on Rockers Saturday won. watching sports, which made it even worse. That made my weekend even worse. I had to go from a very tough Seton Hall loss with another questionable decision by the officiating crew. You watch sports from 9 a.m. till like 5 p.m. Yeah. Then there was a Rutgers game on, and although I was partly awake for it, they won their first road game of the season, which is actually very big for Rutgers. Which is embarrassing. Then I watched the Raiders lose. <clears throat> and I think the officiating is being blown out of proportion. The Raiders didn't deserve to win that game. They were playing like garbage the whole time. But just a bad day in general for me as a sports fan on Saturday. So then I went to the gym and I felt much better when I left. Okay. Did we go? I don't, we didn't do anything on Saturday. What do you mean? We, we literally that was all. I don't think I. No, I home. I was a a complete waste yeah, until. Yeah. Sometimes you need those days, though. I appreciated it. I think we we've been pl- in like planning and meetings a lot, especially last week. We would do this show, mm-hmm. obviously, but every day last week we also had a video call to talk about different things that we're planning, and uh, it gets to a point where like you know what, I'm just gonna unplug completely. Yeah. And zone out, and other than being on my phone to like text my friends during the Seton Hall game. Or during the football games, I didn't really do a lot. It was just good to yeah. to unplug. If you're joining us today and you haven't been here live in a while, um, we we moved. <laughs> we did. We should have a really cool announcement later on this week. This week? Yeah. No, not that one. I, I don't even know what you're talking about. I don't. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Forgot about that. That'll be kind of cool. <laughs> I'm excited for that. It'll be a good time. Um, I did know. I just, I'm forgetful. And plus, we we do have a lot of things on the horizon, so it's hard to, to keep track of where we are sometimes. And then, made by Erica, who is in the chat right now, I wanted to get her on the show today, and I completely forgot to schedule time with her, so we're going to do it tomorrow. Okay. Um, it has to do with the love bombing. We talked about love bombing last week. And how when you first are dating someone, like, love bombing is when, like, you come at them hard with, like, a lot of, like, compliments, spending time with them, gifts, whatever it may be. She got love bombed to, like, an insane level, and I want to talk about that. Okay. So we're going to have someone actually call in, Erica, tomorrow, if she can do it. Uh, Roosevelt, so Roosevelt Code Student. We actually are working with the Roosevelts oh. to do, a like, a first-time buyer's code, I believe. Yeah, they are working on it because I don't think it, they did a test. It doesn't exist yet. It just doesn't work. But we are going to be the first people, I believe, that have our own Roosevelt's, like, code. Well, we've had codes. Before. No, no, but, like, We're we've far. had codes as, We've had codes as friends. We haven't had an actual partnership. We're, like, business partnership we're testing with them. out what they're going to use for, like, real influencers. Amanda O'Brien said, oh, I love bombed my Facebook guy. So, Amanda, we spoke to a while back. I don't know. From what we... She bought him a gift. That's why. And she's looking at it like that. No, I don't think one gift is love bombing. And it was his birthday. It's true. That's like a pretty normal thing to do, especially in the early part of a relationship. I don't think love bombing... uh, Who knows? We also don't know every single thing that Amanda said to said man. So, I mean... She told us. Uh, nice modeling tones. Yes, the Roosevelt's actually did use me in one of their pictures recently. Uh, it was think- more of, I was more of the backup <laughs> yeah. model, to be honest with you guys. But I modeled nonetheless. There was a professional photographer. You look great. Thank you. Like, Appreciate actually, that. not just saying it. Not that I would just say it, but you look great. Don't forget the video of Caitlin to show Anthony Carla Marie. Okay, not only am I going to show Anthony. That's in the chat. I'm Wendy. going to reveal it live on the show, and I had it. On my to-do list, but I was like, uh, maybe we should do it. What I don't know if people are going to be here on Monday. We didn't know what today's show was. Today's, today is a not a, not an off day, obviously, because we're all here. Uh, today is a down day. Today is a let's just chill, hang out as friends. Yeah. Tomorrow we'll be back to, be to like the show. You know what I also want to start doing, and maybe but, we start it tomorrow. So the video we will show, um, Caitlin Wendy from Brooklyn, her daughter opening up her "You Look Great" beanie for Christmas. Oh, cool! That'll be exciting. Um. What I also want to start doing is playing games again on the show. I feel like we got away from that for a little bit because we were traveling and whatnot, but I'd like to start playing. We have a whole closet full of board games, Mm -hmm. and we usually find a way to do it like a rapid one-on-one round, 1v1, or have you guys help in the chat. 
um, a show I started watching and that I wanted to talk about. My Unorthodox Life. Okay. On Netflix. Okay, wait. Pause. Rewind. I watched all of Cheer season two on Saturday. So if you're available, whole season available to talk about it, let me know. Well, I cleaned out. I cleaned out my closet while watching. Microphone. And I also would just sometimes just sit down and watch because Cheer is life. Um. So yes, watch all of Cheer season two, and I obviously have seen one. Um. Then I started my Unorthodox Life. Oh my god! Is it about like Orthodox Jews or Orthodox? Yeah, is but. It- they leave the community like oh, okay. they left like seven years ago, and now the woman who left and her kids are like the show. But she like created a shoe line that was then bought by La Perla, which is like the company that has all the famous shoes. Okay. Then she became the CEO of some modeling agency and it has a clothing line now. And she's like so rich. So I was like, let me go on her website. She has a twenty three thousand dollar dress on there. Jeez. So yeah. So it's crazy to watch though because in season one they're like not still back and forth but like the one daughter just went back to the dad in Muncie, New York is where they lived. Muncie? Yeah. That's where I went to my first ever strip club. It was Muncie, New York? Was I? They weren't Orthodox Jew strippers, but it was a really weird dynamic because we would oftentimes go on Friday nights. Not oftentimes. I went there like three times my whole life. <laughs> but my friend, okay, let me let me backtrack. My friend Nick. Uh, got someone pregnant in high school. Okay. Right after high school, he married that same woman. Okay. So we were all 18, 19 years old with no money, so we had to throw Nick a bachelor party. So we went to right, Ridgewood, New Jersey is just under the border yeah. of New York. So that's where we went. We went to Muncie, New York. One of our friends, I don't know, probably got the MapQuest directions <laughs> at the time. Probably had to ask an old prospector for directions or something like that. And we went there. But what because we went on a Friday, yeah. a lot of the Orthodox Jews are walking to their service. Mm. And we, we were driving by all of them on our way to go see some boobies. Okay. It's a which, weird dynamic. Which is definitely not allowed. They can't show their collarbones. They can't show their arms, their legs. Women. The strippers can. The strippers record. can. Yes. But, like, I'm lear- I didn't know this, that... I don't know if it's as punishment or always, but their clothing is like dipped in some sort of acid so that it's painful when you're wearing it. That sounds painful. I have a lot to learn. And I'm on like episode three or four of that season one. And I already started following the daughters on Instagram. So I got some spoilers. So uh, Renee is apparently also watching. She said not to downplay everything that she's done. She's amazing. The woman you're talking about with the clothing line. But she was also rich before she left the community. I believe it. Uh, a lot of that seems exaggerated. I know. I started, so I started looking up and I started reading people from the community be like, that's not true. Like, they say women are not allowed to run. Like, someone's like, I ran a whole, I ran a marathon in two different states. Like, I don't know what she's talking about. So. There's actually, interestingly I don't know, there's something enough, about the show that I love, though. I know there's a, a huge Orthodox Jew, uh, Jewish population in uh, Brooklyn. There's also mm-hmm. actually one by my parents' house down in Long Branch, I believe. Is it Asbury, Long Branch? I don't know what town down there, but there's also a huge community there. Um, but mm-hmm. I, I would like to watch that show, especially because okay. working with Catch my dad up. in the jewelry district, um, the Orthodox, the Jewish Orthodox community is is huge in the Diamond District yeah. as well. You should catch up, and then we can watch together. Lakewood, thank you very much. Oh. Andrea from New Jersey, <sighs> appreciate Speaking you. Speaking of shows, everyone keeps telling me to watch The Sex Life Sex Lies of College Girls on HBO Max. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm getting DMs from listeners that are like, this show is you. Why are you not watching it? Like, not is me, because I guess it's, that's a weird thing to say. <laughs> You're not but a college like, girl. But, like, it is something you would thoroughly enjoy and support. So I need to watch that. And there's a new show with uh, Ricky, what's his name? Ricky Gervais on Netflix that I think we need to watch together about his wife dying, but it's, like, funny. Dark comedy. Okay, sure. I just Googled now. Oh, there it is. Afterlife? Afterlife. Oh, yeah. That's that's not the first season of it, is it? I feel like he's had that show before. It came up as new. Oh, three seasons. Yeah. What the fuck? It might be a new season now. The The show that I'm waiting for, and I believe it's this week, is Ozark. There are two shows. Ozark and uh, The Umbrella Academy that are coming out hopefully soon. And I'm very excited for both of those shows. Neither of us have watched Succession. Mm-mm. I feel like it's a show I would definitely enjoy, though. 
I had to uh, give up on Ozark because it's the same reason you don't watch Yellowstone. I can't be in. I can't. I can't do it. I'll watch yeah. Happy Endings. I'll watch Sits Creek for the forty seventh time. I'll watch The Office. But if it involves panic, I can't do it. So, Carl and Ray, there's the two things that we disagree with when it comes to our shows. I'm gonna sneeze. Bless you. <coughs> Bless you. Thank you. So, the two things, are, the, the one incompatible thing we probably have, other than being Rutgers and Seton Hall fans, respectively, is the type of TV that we like to watch. Mm-hmm. I am a drama and or documentary person. Okay. Like suspense, drama, all of that stuff. Love it. Or dorky history documentaries. Mm-hmm. Carla Marie is a reality TV type person. Ah, right? uh, you know what? I'm not going to give you that. You're not? A sitcom. Sit, okay, but sitcoms we agree on. Like, I, li- I also uh, like sitcoms. You don't enjoy laughing. You don't enjoy... <laughs> what? You don't... En- like, Shit's Creek, you hate watching it. You, I the love office, Creek. We'll watch, like, one episode. You're like, I, I can't watch another one. No, because I, when, I, when I watch a show, I don't oftentimes watch shows and do other things. Yeah, I'll text. What? Neither, what do you mean? No, you, you're like No, after cooking. the first time. Exactly. And then you watch a show 1,800 times. Yeah. That I don't do. But... I never used to. Want to the it. thing that drives me nuts about the shows that Carla Marie watches, especially a show like Cheer, is I feel like she watches a lot of reality shows where there are women screaming <laughs> for no reason. And what, especially when you're not watching the show actively, <laughs> when you just hear it <laughs> in the background, it is infuriating. Yeah, and then it's like, what are you watching? It's always like, like rah, rah, rah. It's just that, that noise. They're cats. They're cats. That noise. That stupid women specifically make when they're excited. Not all women. Stupid women. Okay, just because stupid, they're cheerleaders the doesn't mean they're stupid. That's not no, because also your your sunset show. What's that? Selling show? sunset. They all there's this this weird <laughs> decibel and tone that women in reality. I'm TV gonna let shows, all of you just shit on it. I'm fine. not gonna stick up for it. I don't think th- I don't think there's gonna be a lot of that. Specifically, the dumb women in reality shows, reality TV shows. When they get to that. That sound, oh my god, it's the worst. Yeah, woo, it's like the woo girls of reality TV. They're just the worst. And especially, I under, listen, I understand that when you're watching the show and you have the context, you absorb it differently. However, when you're not watching the show and you don't have the context, context it's like listening to a child scream on an airplane. You also hate when Moira Rose is screaming when you're not watching. Yeah. And I, and I do like, Schitt's Creek is a good show. And her character is phenomenal. Show. But yeah, she does like the that sound. Ugh, God. I wish I could talk like Mario Rose. I can't do it. Yeah. Uh, Tones, have you started 1883? That came from Belinda and 20 in the chat. I watched the first episode that was free. I have not watched the episodes that are only available on Peacock. Nick NYC said, my wife just finished her 90 day fiance phase, Anthony, and I totally understand. And I don't, there aren't a lot of people that are disagreeing with me. I'm not saying all women make that sound. And I'm not even saying that when you're in the conversation, the sound is terrible. I'm specifically Baby. saying when you're not part of it. Oh my God. It's Ooh, the worst. Thanks for the fall. Is that big easy who just followed? I believe. Thank you. Uh, A. Jane said, I am the same as Carla Marie. I can't watch anything that brings me anxiety or sadness. I don't need help to find my anxiety. <laughs> it's true. Um, uh, Vicky, I kind of gave up on Gilmore Girls because I was like, there's just so much whining and complaining for no reason. Who's in Gilmore Girls? Lorelai. What's her name in real life? That doesn't make any sense to I me. Know. I don't know. I can't think of her name. Uh, let's see. Audi Swan said, I disagree, Anthony. I could say the same thing about sports. Oh, sports talk. When, boys. And you're watching. You're 100 percent right. Uh, when you're watching, like, what is it called when they're yelling at each other? But I think all you, of the shows in Sports Center, they're like, no, 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 no. Listen, li- you listen to me. He is not the best. Qu- no, no. Let me. He's not the best quarterback. Yeah, it's all it is. Yeah. Literally, Sports Center is wah, wah, and dings and blah, 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 and more dings and dings. And right after this commercial break. And then they're like, blah, 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 blah. so what I would say is you actually you and Audi Swan don't disagree with me. You actually agree with me more than you'd like to admit you. 
Because uh, it's actually worse. When you are involved in it, it's not as bad. Yeah. yeah. When you're listening mm-hmm. to it in the background and you're not involved in the show. No, even when I'm it's watching terrible. Sports Center with you. Yeah, but you wouldn't be that's not your choice to watch it usually. You just happen to be in the room while I am watching one of those shows. <laughs> and that's right. Um Lauren Graham? Nope. Laura Graham and Alexis Bledel are in. Well, so everyone Gilmore says Girls. Lauren, not Laura. Lauren? That was Laura Graham. Literally everyone's saying. Oh, Lauren. I'm thinking of Laura Ingram. And then Ale- I don't know who either of those people are. Yes, you do. I Wasn't can't. that other girl that who sung for a little bit? She was in Gilmore Girls. She used to come to the studio every now and then. That's them. G- who else is in Gilmore Girls? Or no, Gossip Girl. That's Leighton Meester. She would, it was funny. Leighton Meester used to be friends with um, or work associates. Somehow she knew one of the, the guys that used to work at Z100 at night, Phil. Mm. And there were random times where I would be coming and going into the studio late or super early. You saw Leighton Meester? And Leighton Meester would just be there. Shut up. Yeah. You never told me this. Yeah. It wasn't like a weekly thing. It was like a handful of times over my, you know, seven years of being there. Is your name Lorelai from Miami? I do love you, the name Lorelai. Lorelai from Miami. Oh, there you go. I do love the name Lorelai. Big fan of that. You never watch. I was watching Gilmore Girls one day, and you were like, "What is this show?" Never seen. Never seen an episode. Gossip Gore Girl. What was <laughs> Gossip that? Girl. Gossip Gore. Uh, Gilmore show. Girls. Never watched either of those shows. The t- what? Oh, second. No. Oh, first season of what show are we talking about now? Degrassi? No, we're just doing TV. Now we're just TV doing all Monday. TV stuff. Well, listen, hopefully oh. you have some time off today Another because one. there is a lot of time to watch some shows if you have uh, if you can do that. What were you saying, Oh, for? This is us. I watched like the first two seasons. My mom also watches it, but we would. Isn't that all drama? I would cry my eyes out. Every episode, every episode. And I was like, I can't, I can't do this anymore. It is great. And it makes you feel something and it's emotional, but I cannot every Tuesday night sit on my couch alone with my cats and cry anymore. It's just not happening. So I stopped watching. Megan from Cedro Bully, a Morgan from Cedro Bully agrees that she said she cried every episode. I mean, free therapy for who Amanda? Because it felt like I was going back in time. Although Jack's so hot. And so is what's his name. Except I don't like him because he divorced Chriselle Strauss in real life. I don't know who any of these people are. I've also, I've seen maybe like half Justin an episode Hartley. of This Is Us. It did seem like a downer show. But it seemed like a cool, like real show. I thought that was the interesting part. Wait, time out. Julie said, I didn't know this. So Shop Forward, I mentioned them the other day because I have their Four Things Journal. Uh Mary and then Amy from the Bobby Bone Show have that company together. Apparently, Mary's nephew plays Baby Jack in This Is Us. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Who knew? It's got happy moments in the show. That's good to know. But you're probably still... Are you crying for the happy moments, too? Yeah, it's just... I'm like, I don't need this. Stop. Give me stupid TV. Well, listen, it is... It's been... A phenomenal show. Thank you for everyone who joined in the chat today. Thank you for, especially to all the people, not that you're, you know, everyone's equally important, but uh, to all the people who normally can't watch us live, but maybe had the day off or got to work from home or whatever. Maybe your schedule was different Mm -hmm. today. Thank you for hanging out with us today. Remember, you can always check us out on YouTube, youtube.com slash Carla Marie Anthony show. Yep. uh, Because you're not allowed, apparently, to put the words the and and. Nope. (laughs) YouTube channel. It's a real weird rule. Uh, I bet you if we had more followers, they'd let us do it. No, that's more not subscribers. True. And don't forget to, in honor of Betty White, what would have been Betty White's 100th birthday. Thank you, Felipe. Donate to a animal rescue of your choice. We obviously love Motley Zoo Animal Rescue. The thing is, everyone donate five bucks. Yep. That is what is going around. That is the trend. Also, it is Martin Luther King Day, and the organization that one of my friends recommended is Fair Fight Action. So you can donate five bucks each today. Yeah. Call the day. I think in honor of uh, MLK Day, I think one of the most important things you can do is find a cause, specifically a civil rights cause today um, for MLK Day, but find a cause that you're passionate about, and whether it's money or time, 
help them donate that, whatever you can, uh, today especially. And it looks like it's Diana in Vermont's birthday. It's what? Diana in Vermont's birthday. Whoa. I mean, I gotta pee. All right, well, Shaking. you can go pee. And look at this. We have a, a cute little thing that shows you that the stream is over. Oh, what ah, is Ah, you it? look great. Can you hear us? 